so I decided not to sleep at all tonight and we got to get on a plane that leaves in like an hour and a half. So Haley's brushing her teeth, we're going to go head to the airport, she's going to drop me off, probably go get something to eat. Is Chick-fil-A open? Packed up everything though, we got everything packed up for like the four days I'm going to be in Taipei. I got the PlayStation 4 in here because I think I can remote play it to my laptop and play Grand Theft Auto San Andreas on the entire flight. That would be pretty good. And then we got and then we got a bunch of snacks in here. And all the while, while something is still rendering, this is the GHK AUG review. And it's uh, not doing so hot on the render time. And I'm not going to even attempt to uh, clean any of this up. I'll worry about that when I get home in four days. I don't know what we're going. Can I zoom up like really close on your face? So we can see all the boogers in your nose. It's so much humidity that the lens is completely fogged up. That's what I see out of my glasses. Oh well. Alright, so we are here at our game. We're about to get on the flight. First we're going to hit up San Francisco, I think, and then we're going to be leaving to Taipei, Taiwan. And I am really, really excited and yet kind of freaked out. I've never been this far away from home. I've never been to a different country, so pretty stoked, pretty stoked. I also got my PlayStation 4, my backpack, and everything. United Airlines Beijing, Kevin well, that was Campbell, rude. please. I also got my PlayStation 4, my backpack, and all the wires and controllers so I can remote play it on my laptop. We're gonna be playing a lot of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas until we get there. It's a 20 hour flight, so I think I have enough time to finish the campaign. But the flight's boarding now, and I bet people are already looking at me way too much because it's kinda of awkward. So I guess I'll see y'all on the flight. So we just arrived here in San Francisco, but my flight is in for another six hours until we can go to Taiwan. So I'm gonna go and explore the airport, see what I can find, but wasting six hours here is gonna be a challenge. Question, what the hell do you mean kiss and ride? All right, so it's day two. We've made it to the hotel. Uh, last night we went to a night market. We checked out a few places. 
Uh, we tried a little bit of different food around here, a lot of good stuff. Uh, sadly, I don't know the names of a lot of stuff that we tried. But uh, we went to a whole bunch of places, a lot of good food, a lot of cool sites. There's a lot of B-roll footage for me to make, like really awesome stuff with. And uh, our hotel is nothing to uh, shake a stick at. I'm really holding on to my camera, but oh man, the drop. This is a really nice place. And uh, there's breakfast on the second floor. So uh, we're gonna go uh, bust a munch, as they say. The only thing that's kind of strange, and I guess I'm gonna have to get used to it, is that everything is really small. Um, I'm not on my tippy toes or anything. This is just how tall the ceilings are. Uh, the shower is very, very tiny, um, but uh, I guess you can see how small everything is by just how small the elevator is. But uh, we're gonna go to the second floor. We're gonna go check out the breakfast. I want some OJ Simpson. And then I think later on we're gonna go check out the actual competition and get some footage of all the teams. I gotta meet the UK team, I've already met the New Zealand team, the Spain team, uh, the Mexican team. There's a whole bunch of awesome people here and I'm trying to talk to everybody as much as I can. This is a really awesome trip and I really gotta thank G&G for sending me. So uh, let's go check out the food. Well, I guess never mind about the breakfast. So something I find like pretty interesting is I have a really like I have really bad luck whenever I'm filming in public because I generally get at least one person in the US that will see me filming anywhere that we are and they'll tell me to stop filming even if they're not security or anything they just hate being on camera even if they're just in the very background but here no one cares. I filmed all sorts of stuff yesterday with a lot of people going through the camera. A lot of people on the street, a lot of people in the cars, and no one messes with you and nobody like tells you to stop filming or does anything that would have to be edited out. Everybody just kind of puts up with it in a way, you know, they don't feel bothered by it. And I actually got a few people smiling and just enjoying themselves. They have no problem with me filming and that's really cool. Milky Sakura Lays. I don't know what any of the air flavors are. Seaweed flavor Lay's. So, as you can tell, bikes are uh, pretty popular here. I'd say very popular here. So something Charlie was telling me is this stadium, as you can see all the seats and stuff, they were actually building the stadium just like any other stadium, but they couldn't make much profit off of it. They hadn't had no plans and things just fell through. So this big building here was kind of an afterthought and they built this so they can actually make some money off of this area. And uh, it's kind of spooky. They, all the seats are just completely covered up. There's nobody here. It looks like a crazy skate spot though with all the ledges and pads. I just want to see some skateboarders, honestly. This place is awesome with that. There's no skate stoppers anywhere, but I haven't seen a single person besides some, some guys last night, but <laughs> this place is awesome. So much sweat from all the humidity though. It's really brutal. There, there's no joke about it. So uh, Charlie, how's the weather? Uh, I mean, it's not too bad, but uh, it's uh, definitely hot and uh, humid. So if you're not used to humidity, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty painful for you. <laughs> you just get like completely soaked and it's not even your sweat for the yeah, first I mean, part. This is literally just being outside for five minutes and I'm more sweating, you can tell. And uh, I mean, I'm from LA, but uh, this is pretty bad. Um, I've been to Taiwan many times, but it's not as bad as other times, but uh, it is still pretty bad. So even if you're from like Texas, Georgia, Miami, it still gets to you so picture Florida but just if you got all the side effects instantly yeah pretty much <laughs> all right guys we're here at the GNG World Cup 2019 and everybody's starting to get ready there's everybody already chronoing I think are they just doing targets or checking out their hop-ups making sure everything is all set up it's really noisy in here it's still really sweaty in here it's really hot Good thing I didn't gel my hair. There's also a whole bunch of new stuff back there that we have got to get Charlie to talk about. I'll probably make a separate video about it. There's just so much good looking stuff that we have to check out back there. So uh, we're gonna go and let the uh, teams and all, we're gonna actually, let's just go meet all the teams because there's so many awesome people over here. Uh, we'll try to talk to whoever we can. All right, so it's pretty much mayhem over here. Everybody's checking out their guns, making sure their hop-ups are set. There's pistols, there's rifles going on. And just about everyone here, there's Japanese players, there's Brazilian players, there's New Zealand players. Everyone's talking to each other and everybody's having a good time. Hey. 
So as you can guess, this is pretty much the big leagues. This is the G&G World Cup 2019, and all these people are competing for a $10,000 grand prize. And they're gonna be battling it out in, for, in like courses like this, and it's crazy. And it changes every year, so no one can practice this thing. It's gonna be intense, and we're gonna try to be there along the entire ride either above the shoulders of players because I don't want to, you know, mess up anyone who's going for a really good time. But I'll see if we can get a few bonus runs so I can be over the shoulder of a few people so we can actually see them take out the targets. There's quite a lot of people here, so we should be able to do that quite easily. All right, so we have the CM16 LMG in tan, the CM16 LMG in black, but this, this really has my attention. This is the G64. And I remember these from SHOT Show 2019, and I definitely remember what a lot of you guys said about them, but I guess right now, if you haven't seen these yet, comment down below what you guys think about these little guys. PRK9. The long barrel key mod one is pretty cool, but honestly, it would be a really big fight between this little guy, the pistol model, and the RTS. I actually really like that stock, and I like really small guns, so... Uh, that's a pretty big fight, but I'm gonna have to probably say the RTS. Ah, oh, but this one's so good looking. What do you guys think? Which one should I get if I get any of them? 